The Indiana Hoosiers and Mike Woodson have the best roster in the Big Ten, and it's really not close. You are Locked On Hoosiers, your daily podcast on the Indiana Hoosiers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in. It is the Locked On Hoosiers podcast. I'm your man, Jacob Goins. Appreciate you being here, making this your first listen each and every day. We are a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, which is your team every day. Thank you so much for being here, making this your go-to spot for all things Indiana athletics. The Indiana Hoosiers in basketball this season, coming up in the Big Ten, will have the best roster, and it's not even close. We'll talk about that today, plus take a look at some of those big-time recruits that were playing in the Adidas event this past weekend, plus an update on Indiana baseball as they stay alive in the Big Ten tournament. The Indiana Hoosiers, you look at this current roster and you look at what's coming back, you look at what's coming in through the high school ranks, and most importantly, you look at what's coming in through the transfer portal. And we talked yesterday about looking through some of the power rankings in the Big Ten and how the Indiana Hoosiers are already getting the love. We're a top five team. Everybody knows what we are. Everybody understands that this team is going to be very, very good. And it's simply because the roster has been elevated tremendously. You lost a couple of guys through graduation. You lost guys through the portal. Nobody that I think we're ever going to really sweat over. And then you lost Khalil Ware going to the NBA. But you bring in the best portal class in the country, which I've told you before is not a place that you want to consistently be. That's not something, and I think this is more on the football side, but you don't want to be here every single year. You don't want to be that team that All they can do is go in the transfer portal because then you're struggling in the high school ranks. And I still think that's where programs are built. I think that's where programs are going to be successful is recruiting out of the high school ranks, which is guys we'll be talking about in just a little bit. But in a year like this, where the Hoosiers had to rebuild, they had to reload, they had to go get guys out of the portal and just make this a competitive roster They went and did that. And not only did they pull the number one class in the country, pretty much any way you look, they pulled three of the best five players in the Big Ten in the transfer portal. You go look at rankings, no matter where you go, Ken and Carlisle, Miles Rice, and Umar Ballo are three of the best players that were available in the transfer portal, and the Hoosiers brought them in, did Mike Woodson. That makes this roster already one of the best in the Big Ten, on top of what you bring back, one of the best fours in the conference with Malik Renu. I think McKenzie Mbaco has a chance to be one of the most effective threes in this conference, and I believe could be one of the better three-point shooters in this conference. Maybe the best non-guard three-point shooter. How about we put it at that? Because there's going to be some good guards that could shoot in this league. I'm going to go ahead and tell you. So maybe we'll put it at that, that McKenzie Mbaco could be the best non-three or the non-guard best three-point shooter. We'll leave it at that. And then you bring back Trey Galloway, your sixth-year senior, who was a starter for you for all this time and is still an elite shooting guard on top of your transfer portal players. Umar Ballo, who will be the best center in the in the Big Ten. I believe that. I think that's going to be the case. And you bring in Miles Rice and Cannon Carlisle, two of the better guards out of the portal. It's no doubt about it this roster is the best in the Big Ten which I think is going to carry us a long way. That's why the pressure's on. That's why this year is so important. That's why Mike Woodson has to win now. And that's why I think a lot of you, Indiana Hoosiers fans, are worried but excited at the same time. It's like, man, I can't wait for the season to get here, but it has to go well. The pressure has been ramped up tremendously, more than it's been in a long time. Because there were a lot of you that wanted Mike Woodson to be gone and not be the head coach anymore. And look, I can promise you this right now. If Mike Woodson had not been retained and he had been fired or let go or whatever the case may be, if Indiana was bringing in a new head coach, you would not have brought those three players, plus Luke Goody as well through the transfer portal. Those four players would not be here right now. You would not have drawn in the number one portal class in the country. Not only that, you would not have gotten Ballo, Carlisle, and Rice. You may have gotten one or somehow or the other, but you also would have lost Malik, Renew, McKenzie, and Baco. That would have been really, really tough. 
this roster would look completely different if a lot of fans got their wish and a lot of big name people in the program and around the program with a little cha-ching, if you know what I mean, if those people had gotten their way, it would have been really, really bad in terms of what this roster could look like. You're looking around the country and you look down at Kentucky right now as John Calipari goes to Arkansas and they bring in Mark Pope. Yeah, they've gone in and hit the portal pretty hard, but I'll take our roster over theirs right now. Absolutely. And now you're having to rebuild with a brand new head coach. That's tough to do. That's not easy. And that's what Kentucky's having to do. And that's what the Hoosiers were thinking about doing. But instead, you bring back some of your best players. You go get Bryson Tucker out of high school, who's one of the best recruits in the country in the 2024 class. And you bring in the number one ranked portal class. And now your roster is where it needs to be. Better than it was last year. And I still believe it's going to be the best one in the Big Ten, which is why this year is so crucial and important. You've got everything in place. If you are Mike Woodson and this staff and you are the Indiana Athletic Department, the pressure is on because you have everything. What more could you ask for? The fan support is still there. It always will be here in Indiana. But you've got everything. You've got the starters. You've got the bench pieces. You've got the recruits. You've got the returners. You've got the shooters, defense, all those things. You have them now. And sure, the Big Ten's harder than it's ever been with the new additions to the conference. But even with those additions, I still think we have the best roster. There's going to be some competition up there. Sure, there's going to be some really good teams in this conference. And I think there's going to be a couple of teams that are not so good. Got to take advantage of those. We don't know what the schedule looks like. But we do know we have some favorable draws, especially at home. Those have to be wins. You have to take care of those and make a run this season. I'm not saying a national championship, but I think you got to get to the tournament with no doubt about it. Missing the tournament's not acceptable around here. Get to the tournament and let's make a run. Let's see what we can do with this roster that, again, I believe, I know it. It will be the best roster in the Big Ten. Whether we know that or not off the rip, I don't know. But I think it will establish itself as that once Big Ten play gets here and kind of as we get through Big Ten play, I think you'll be able to really start comparing uh, these rosters top to bottom, one through five, and then the bench players as well, and just be able to see it visibly at the Indiana Hoosiers. is gonna be They're going to be a really good team. And our roster is the best in the Big Ten, in my opinion right now. Well, coming up on Locked on Hoosiers, we'll take a look at the high school recruits that competed in the Adidas event over the weekend. We talked a little bit about this and just so many big names that the Hoosiers are going after. Players, you need to know and why it's so important to continue to hit the high school ranks, especially with those here in the state of Indiana. That's coming up next on Locked on Hoosiers. Today's episode of Locked on Hoosiers is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over, over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make you, your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusion supply, eBay's guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. Welcome back into Lockdown Hoosiers. Appreciate you being here again, making this your first listen each and every day. I appreciate you making that. So if you're on YouTube, be sure you like the video, comment down below, subscribe to our channel. We're past 2,500, heading towards 3,000 subscribers. So I would love for you to be a part of that. Thank you so much. If you're on audio, be sure that you follow us on there, turn on notifications, whatever you got to do to make sure you never miss a new episode 
of Locked on Hoosiers. Well, there were two big events going on this weekend in terms of high school basketball, and one of them was the 3SSB event, the Adidas circuit uh, that was going on for the 2025 class in high school recruiting. And this was down in Texas, and no, I did not make the trip, unfortunately, but just reading through and hearing the people that did go and seeing all these big-time names and big-time kids and all these different teams, I mean, it, it it's wild to me to see how many kids now are just so stinking good. I mean, there's just so much talent across the country now in high school basketball. It really is. Uh, it, it's a sight to see. And when they all get together on these big travel teams and their AAU teams and all these teams that are put together just to show off their skill sets and they're going up against each other in big time weekends and week long events like this, it's awesome. It, it's so much fun. If you get a chance to go, I highly recommended it or highly recommend it. But you have some guys that were competing. Um, and I look at a guy like Darren Peterson, who is the number three overall prospect in the country. And you just look at a guy from Ohio who is just a stud, man. He's just an absolute stud. And so many of these guys like him, they don't look like they're in high school. They look like they could be playing college basketball right now. And you know what? You could probably handpick a few of them and they could compete in college basketball right now, which is scary, but also just a testament to where we are nowadays. And I think you could say that about some football guys as well with some of the size that you see with these players. And, and for him, Darren Peterson, uh, offensively, he's got it all. I think he's just a freak of an athlete. I think he's got a great shot. I think his handles are fantastic. He just knows the game and can really, really play place of basketball some of the names that you are familiar with is the indiana elite team which this is where the hoosiers have to live this is where mike woodson and us we have to be on this team and we are and you're going to recognize a lot of these names when i start talking about them desmond briscoe malachi moreno braylon mullins trent sisley all those guys are playing on the same team, all right? And in this type of an event, when Indiana Elite rolls in, people sit down and watch. You get a ticket. You get a spot for when this team rolls in because of what they've been doing to people. And this team is absurd. Between Moreno and Mullins and Sisley and Briscoe, all guys that the Hoosiers are interested in, especially those first three, the Hoosiers – are all over it. You look at uh, look at uh, Moreno, who's ranked number thirty one overall, who is just a, a a guy that knows it all, and he does a lot off the ball too, which is exciting to me. With uh, Malachi Moreno Mullins, uh, who has a couple of big time offers already, this is the one who. The Hoosiers were on early and on often, and then all of a sudden UConn got involved and kind of woke up everybody else on the six foot five player. And everybody was like, wait a minute, why is Dan Hurley and UConn interested in this kid? Maybe we've overlooked him. And now everybody's come back and realized that Mullins is, is a fantastic player. Sisley, on the other hand, has big time offers um, and people that are interested in him. Purdue is one of those. Michigan State, Iowa, Indiana. We talked about Sisley the other day where these guys are, are from here. They're in this area. They're in these these states that are around us where you've got to go and land these guys and just understand that Indiana's the place they need to be. And I think they all fit Mike Woodson's system really well if he remains to be the head coach, which I think this year goes well, and I think that's going to be the case, so I don't have any concern with that by any means. The one guy that I'm still learning a little bit more about is Desmond Briscoe, six foot seven, uh, playing in the front court, and people have talked about how um, he just kind of is big. I mean, he plays really well to his size at six foot seven, and. Pretty much, if he's inside the paint, he's going to score. And he's got really good touch. I've seen a little bit of film on him, uh, learning more as we go about Desmond Briscoe. But plays to his size really well, and he lives in the paint. If he's going to get the basketball, give it to him down low and allow him to go and work his game. Doesn't that sound like pretty much every big man that plays at Indiana right now, where you give him the ball at the high post at the elbow or down on the low block and just let him work, let him eat down there, which is what, Khalil Ware did a year ago. It's what it's what um, Malik Renew did a year ago. And it's what is going to happen again this year as well with Malik Renew and with Umar Ballo. Like those things are going to happen. And guys like that, guys like 
like Briscoe, want to see that. They want to see that their size is going to be used not just for dunks and defense. They want to say, hey, give me the ball and let me go get a basket. That's what guys like him do. And the Hoosiers feed into that. Sure, we need to get better at the outside game and 18-foot jumpers and orchestrating a little bit better offense. But, man, there's not a better paint team in the country a year ago than what we were in Indiana. I mean, that was our go-to. Now, reason is we didn't have anything else. But, hey, we still – that's our bread and butter. That's where we live is inside that painted area. So when you're going after players that play a big three, a four, or a five – Indiana is a very attractive place for them. And I believe that Mike Woodson will continue to feed into that and continue playing the inside out game. And that's what works here. That's why going and getting shooters was so important because now you can go recruit shooters from high school and say, look, we're going to have big men down low. They're going to allow you to give them the basketball bail out if you need to, but we're going to work inside out, give it to them, get open in the corner. They're going to feed it to you, and you're going to have a chance to knock it down. That's what the Hoosiers are going to do. That's what they've tried to do. They just didn't have the guys to do it last year. But you start talking about these guys from Indiana Elite, these are the ones that the Hoosiers want to go and grab. Also, um, just it just shows what Indiana is able to do putting guys in the league as well because that's what these guys want to do. They want to go play next-level basketball and most importantly, they want to find a fit. They want to find a system that works for them. And basketball is so unique in that because it is such an individual sport at times. If the system's not running in through you, these guys don't want any part of it because they're that good. They're coming from high schools where they drop 40 points a game and they are it. That's not the college game, but they have to have that to a certain extent. And I think with these players in the system that Indiana runs, and thankfully, not that we've said this often, but the old school mentality of Mike Woodson allows them to all be involved in a certain way, shape, or form. It's not just, he's our best player, get in the ball, get out of the way. He's the best one, give it to him, let him go. Nobody else touch it. We're working through him, him, and him, and him only, right? That's not really how this works. And some of these guys, they can't adjust to that. And that's why you see them bounce around or flake out of, of college basketball. But I don't think that's the case with these guys that I'm talking about and so many more where they come in. This is a system. This is a team. Everybody's going to touch the basketball. And we're going to work for the best possible shot. A year ago, it just happened to be everything down in the paint. This year and moving forward, which is what you can sell to 2025, 2026 and beyond for high school recruits is everybody's involved. You will have the basketball in your hands and you will be a part of winning plays, winning games, and winning seasons if you come here to Bloomington, not to mention the guys that we're putting in the league as well. Those are the things you can sell if you're Mike Woodson in Indiana to Malachi Moreno and guys like that, Trent Sicily, Braylon Mullins. Those are the ones you want. Those are the guys you have to have. Harrelson, like we talked about yesterday, you can pitch that to them. What separates you? in high school recruiting. That's what it is because everybody's got transfer portal things. Everybody's got playing time. Everybody's got NIL money. What separates you to land the big time players like this in 2025? That's what the Hoosiers are figuring out. And I think if you start winning games, keep putting them in the league, that's what separates you. Those are things that you can sell here in Bloomington. Coming up in our final segment of Lockdown Hoosiers, a little update on Indiana baseball. Big Ten tournament continuing on. Got some season honors that we need to talk about as well. We'll talk Hoosier baseball coming up after this on Lockdown Hoosiers. Final segment here on Lockdown Hoosiers. Again, appreciate you being here, making this your first listen each and every day. If you have not already, like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment down below if you're on YouTube. Also on audio, be sure you like the show and follow it. Turn on notifications, whatever you got to do to be sure you never miss a new episode of Lockdown Hoosiers. In terms of Indiana baseball, uh, first player in program history to be named to the All-Big Ten first team in each of his first two years. How about sophomore Devin Taylor? Congrats to him, man. That's a big, big deal. First team All-Big Ten as a freshman last year and now as a sophomore this year. He was named to the first, 10, uh, first team All-Big Ten, Connor Foley. Uh, you had guys like Tyler Kearney, Jacob Vogel, and so many others had Big Ten awards that were awarded to them this season. But I'm going to go back to Devin Taylor for a second, who 
in in his sophomore campaign, hit 359 was his batting average, 17 home runs, 10 doubles, 47 RBIs, and his OBP was 453 and a 650 slugging percentage. Yeah, that'll get it done for the three-seeded Indiana Hoosiers, who, by the way, took care of business against Purdue in the first round of the Big Ten tournament. So the Indiana Hoosiers move on. They will play Ohio State tomorrow on Thursday. So if you're watching this on Wednesday when it comes out, the Hoosiers will be playing Ohio State, who took down Nebraska in an upset. How about that? The seven-seed Ohio State Buckeyes take down the Cornhuskers up Nebraska, the two-seed in this tournament. So the Hoosiers will get to take on the Ohio State Buckeyes. Games to still happen today on the 22nd of May. Illinois and Penn State. Illinois is the is the one seed. Penn State, the eight seed, and then Michigan, the four, taking on Iowa, the five. Purdue now bumps down to the to the losers part of the bracket, where now you have Indiana and Ohio State, and then Purdue and Nebraska got to battle it out. They'll play in a game. They'll play the loser of our game. Uh, the winner of our game will move on. It's it's kind of a weird bracket just because of the the number of teams in it. It's a weird looking bracket, but. Look, you got the first one out of the way. And we told you how important this is because Indiana, we are on the bubble of the NCAA tournament. Doing it and talking about this yesterday, or maybe it was on Monday, I can't remember. It was, we were in. As far as I was concerned, we were in. Right there on the edge, but we were in. I started seeing things yesterday saying that we were out, that we were a couple of teams away from being inside the tournament. So regardless, you have to have a good week in Omaha if you are Indiana. You got the first win out of the way, which in a tournament like this is typically the hardest one, right? It's typically the hardest one to win is that first game. And now you have a real opportunity. That's a good Ohio State team, all right? Do not get me... Do not get me wrong. That's a good Buckeyes team. They just upset Nebraska, but you're a better team. Indiana's a better team than Ohio State. You win that game, you move all the way into the weekend. You're already playing, and you're just a couple of games away from winning a Big Ten tournament title. Instead, if you lose, then you got to battle all the way back. You have to get to the end. You got to win numerous times. That's just not where you want to be. And in terms of making the tournament, you're just trying to build that resume at this this is it. This is the only chances you get to build that resume and convince them why you should be in the tournament. I think we do. I think we're going to beat Ohio State. I think we're going to make more of a run here. And just by watching this team, we're tournament good. We're tournament ready. We're good enough to compete and be one of those final teams in the tournament. I don't understand how we're not a tournament team yet. I think it has a lot to do with uh, just the conference as a whole being down, the Big Ten, Big 18, whatever you want to call it, which that's going to be interesting too, right? Watching this uh, next season when when you've got four new teams of USC, UCLA, Washington, and Oregon now competing in baseball too. We like to limit that to football, basketball at times, but man, it's going to be across all sports, and now it's going to look even different than it has in years past. But in terms of this baseball tournament, again, Indiana beats Purdue, Ohio State beat Nebraska. Those two teams, our Hoosiers and the Buckeyes, will face off on Thursday afternoon there in Omaha. Purdue bumps down in Nebraska in the losers part of the bracket. Today, on Wednesday, Illinois, Penn State, and then Michigan and Iowa. So those games are going on happening today, and now that's on the bottom part of the bracket. We'll keep you updated and we'll follow along as the Hoosiers try to make a run in this Big Ten tournament and try to get into the NCAA tournament as well. Well, that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Hoosiers. I appreciate you being here. Again, if you're on YouTube, like this video, send it to everybody you know. They need to be a part of this and subscribe to the channel. It's free, it's easy, takes one tap, and it lets you know each and every time we post a new episode. If you're on audio, follow us, turn on notifications, do whatever you got to do just so you never miss a new episode of Locked on Hoosier. We'll be back tomorrow, Hoosier fans. Until then, stay safe, and I'll talk to you later.